exhibition between here and there. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my process, motivations, inspirations, uh, etc. Uh, I've been an artist my entire life. I've been drawing and painting for as long as I can remember. Um, when I did my first oil painting when I was 16, I'm 31 now. I got really serious about it in high school. I ended up getting decided to go to school, getting a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Um, graduated in 2007 and a couple years after that I moved to Asheville, North Carolina where I'm now located. I'm a realist painter by training, so not this type of work at all. I essentially decided to quit painting, took a little hiatus about six years ago, at which point I had the idea for this current work. My studio is also my gallery, so I'm primarily self-represented, um, but I do show in galleries. I couldn't tell you when I had my first show. Um, essentially, I've built my career off of this work, so I, I think I had my, my first showing of this work in 2011 or 12. I have an open studio kind of concept in terms of like my professional life, but um, I exhibit my work at independent art centers, commercial galleries, um, and you, you know, I kind of, I'm open to a lot of different things, public events. So this is how I start an individual painting. So generally speaking, all of my work looks like this non-objective, totally non-objective, abstract black and white painting. There is no compositional goal, no intention, um, there's no animal in mind at this point. So my reasoning for that is I'm creating this dynamic environment that I'm having to react to because that is really my life experience um, that reflects what I feel like tends to happen um, all the time. You never really know what's going to happen. You have to jump in and react. Um, you have goals, but ultimately you have a lot of opportunities, limitations, truths to deal with. So these paintings begin like this. So the title of my show, Between Here and There, um, it loosely kind of references maybe this idea of, of exploration and discovery and you know getting between one point and next but there's without having a really specific goal or expectation um, I think it allows for a little bit more freedom to explore and discover some things some opportunities so to speak so my next stage of my process I'll basically react to this looking for an animal form um, to some degree it can be very specific it can be very general, um, but essentially I'm going to have that anchoring element of an animal form within this before I do the paint on top of it. The big significance of the animals is their symbolism. Um, I, I consider them very symbolic of, kind of instinct and intuition. I mentioned earlier that my background is in very traditional realism, very realistic type of work. Um, I don't necessarily I don't enjoy doing that anymore um, I felt it was very limiting for me personally I still like it as an art form I just for me personally I didn't enjoy it anymore so essentially I needed to rediscover kind of my artistic identity so with that in mind the animals or the general idea of an animal a specific general anything you can look at them they don't have egos they don't have self-awareness um, as far as I know um, so you have this like beautiful simplicity in terms of their self and that instinct is what drives things to make decisions and to kind of propel you forward. So I kind of take that as an animal myself to um, kind of drive my whole process and then I refine when I need to. They have this kind of, they're a, kind of a broad totem for me. Beyond that too, there's a very practical side of you know, the animals, they still have this, there is still some representation of, you know, in my work, so this anchoring element to, to reference. So if you look at something like this, you can, whether or not you see it or not, um, you 
you know, typically you look long enough, you're going to see the animals in my work. This is, this is titled uh, Bowl, two maybe. Um, so there are elements in here that reference the bowl. There are elements in here that are more about the abstract nature of the painting. So I can always, I can jump back and forth between focusing on the horns as horns or the horns as a shape. Uh, all the color is applied with palette knife primarily. So I apply and I scrape away. So a lot of the fine line work. Uh, occasionally I'll use like a rubber sculptural tool to create some texture as well. I like the freedom of being able to develop it on the fly. I've also spent Know, years and years and years of being like, you know, developing compositions before, so I at least I have the confidence to be able to problem solve when I need to. Um, you know, there's there's definitely a benefit to having a plan. I do have a plan, but not a visual plan. This is a little bit newer piece, so I've been doing this work for about five and a half years. I probably painted almost 300 paintings, not quite, so. Fairly prolific, a lot of work. I work all the time. I'm a full-time professional too. You can see there's a little bit more thick, almost illustrative line work. Um, I do this with, again, this kind of rubber sculptural tool. Uh, still primarily palette knife. I have, in this piece, uh, a gorilla that I'm referencing. It's kind of spilling off the, uh, off the boundaries of the, of the panel. But um, there are elements in here patterns and textures and shapes, some, you know, some reference you know, the texture of fur or you know, musculature, um, general anatomy, but some, you know, mean nothing other than they're just abstract forms. It's like a paint a painting of a gorilla that looks just like a gorilla for the most part. Maybe not the best, maybe not a hyper-realist or anything, but I could essentially paint a painting of a gorilla that looks like a gorilla. But for me as an artist, that is not my goal. I'm not here. I don't feel the need to try to document. Um, I don't feel the need to necessarily purely show off all my skills and my craft. They like the teeth. Obviously there's no amount of teeth that spill out of the face like that, but just the pattern of the teeth um, influenced my decision to kind of to, to to make those marks and maybe delineate space. And um, color is also a big important part of my work. All the color really balances the painting. Um, color has such an important role in, in any art, even if it's devoid of color, even if it's just value, black and white. I think this is a particularly fun piece. It's kind of got a personality too, not that. Necessarily portraits, but sometimes you have elements of the animal's personality, or maybe my personality, kind of injected into the painting. Thank you for joining me at the Rose Center. Again, my name is Daniel McClendon. If you're ever in Asheville, North Carolina, you can look me up, come by my studio, I'll give you a tour.